Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter by explaining what an MVNO is. Now, it's an acronym you may or may not have heard of, but you've probably heard of some MVNOs like Mint Mobile or Visible. In fact, I've reviewed a few MVNOs here on this channel, like those two and a few other services, but today I wanted to take some time to explain what they are. Like how do those companies offer you cheaper talk, text, and data? What exactly is the catch? Why do major carriers work with MVNOs? And why do some major carriers create their own MVNOs in the first place? I'm going to answer all of those questions, but first, let's get down to basics. MVNO stands for Mobile Virtual Network Operator. The important part here is the virtual. Basically, an MVNO is a mobile service provider that does not own the network hardware that provides service to its customers. Take, for example, Mint Mobile, which is an MVNO. They, like other MVNOs, don't have their own cell towers. Instead, they use T-Mobile's network infrastructure and then sell that service as the separate company that they are. Mint Mobile isn't the only MVNO in the US or the world for that matter, and in America there are over 100 MVNOs like Consumer Cellular and Cricket Wireless, which uses AT&T's wireless infrastructure, Visible, which runs on Verizon, and Metro, which also relies on T-Mobile, like Mint Mobile. There are different types of MVNOs, from branded resellers to full MVNOs, and the differences in general are how much a company like Mint Mobile decides to differentiate itself from the larger carrier whose infrastructure it's using. Mint Mobile, for example, has its own branding, staff, and ownership completely separate from T-Mobile, whereas Visible is actually owned by Verizon. So now that you know what MVNOs are, you're probably wondering how they exist in the first place. Like, what is the incentive for a major carrier like T-Mobile to have an MVNO on its network? It does seem like they're creating their own competition, really, by allowing an MVNO to exist, but there's actually a very good economic reason for them to do so. See, building cell towers all over the place is expensive, time-consuming, and requires constant maintenance to keep everything running. To give you an idea, their 5G towers alone cost T-Mobile a billion dollars a year. And in a perfect world for them, a major carrier would have enough customers to support all of that hardware. But because a mobile network has overhead built into it, in other words, they need more bandwidth than they'll actually use, there's going to be unpaid space. A mobile carrier could build a smaller network or just try to max out the network that they have with as many users as possible, but that would result in a lot of dropped calls slow data speeds, and many, many, many upset customers, not exactly the best business plan. Instead, what carriers do is sell a portion of their network to a big customer. Since companies like Mint Mobile purchase in bulk a large chunk of network services from providers like T-Mobile, T-Mobile is able to make more money from a single purchase that's more stable over time, which helps them offset the cost of running their network. Mint Mobile benefits because they can resell that service to you and they cut their own cost by not having any physical stores or a mobile network to maintain. But the major carriers can and do deprioritize MVNO customers and prioritize their own customers on their network when needed. In essence, the major carrier is now getting money for those unused portions of its network and if things get a little bit crowded, they can temporarily slow down things for the MVNO users. Like when you're at a concert or a hockey game, there are only so many cell towers in a given area. All of the AT&T people, for example, might be connecting to a nearby tower. As that one gets more and more traffic from calls and data, the less overall bandwidth there is for each individual. So MVNO customers on AT&T, like Cricket Wireless, will be the first ones to have their data slowed down. If things are especially busy, the network might temporarily pause the MVNO customers for a while until the local network calms down a bit. MVNO customers don't get priority on the network, but the flip side of that is they're also paying less for their mobile service. Under normal circumstances, you probably won't notice much throttling, but when you go to a concert or a sporting event or some other really crowded place, you may notice that your internet speeds are getting a little bit slower or you may not be able to connect to the internet for a temporary amount of time. It might be hard to make calls going out, but under normal circumstances, you probably are going to experience that. But like I said, at crowded events where there are a lot of other people who happen to be on the same network, you probably are going to experience some amount of throttling. In this way, the MVNO isn't really ever competing directly with the main carrier. There are pricing differences, meaning MVNOs are usually a bit less expensive, and the carrier controls the hardware. If they did ever feel threatened by an MVNO, the carrier could always just pull the plug out from underneath them, or really just not renew their contracts. 
So it is really a symbiotic relationship. The carrier gets to pay for a bigger percentage of running their network, and the MVNO, like Mint Mobile, gets to exist, and we, as the consumers, in theory, get more competition in the market and ultimately lower prices. Like I mentioned, many MVNOs are completely independent with their own branding, with their own advertising, and they probably don't have physical stores to keep their own costs down. On the other hand, some MVNOs are actually owned by the major carrier, like Visible, even though they have their own branding and their own marketing. Make no mistake about it, they are visible by Verizon. Some MVNOs will use a few different carriers, like splitting between AT&T and Verizon as their backbone. They take a bit from here and there, but all MVNOs are using at least one of the major carriers to an extent. There are an ever-growing list of MVNOs, and there will probably be more as the budget mobile service space gets more competitive and the major carriers look to cash in. Now, when you're shopping for an MVNO, there are a couple of good places to get information and a couple of things to look out for, like YouTube channels that happen to review some MVNOs that you're subscribed to, like this channel, like that you are subscribed to, right? You're, you're subscribed? Thanks. Anyway, the first thing to evaluate is the major carrier behind the MVNO. Let's say you know that Verizon has really good coverage in your area. When shopping for an MVNO, look for the one that uses the Verizon network. It's not always clear, but somewhere in the fine print, all MVNOs will disclose the networks they use. Then take a look at the price, data limits, special features, and customer service reviews. The nice thing is most MVNOs are contractless and go on a month-to-month -month or once-every-three-month payment schedule, so you can try out the service, see how it works for you, and then move on to another service if you don't like that original service. Plans are usually $20 to $50 a month, depending on how much talk, text, and data you want, and you can often take your phone number with you, so if you're worried about not being able to move your phone number with you from service to service, in most cases, at least in the US, that's pretty easy to do. So it might be Mint Mobile, but it's using T-Mobile's network. Or Cricket Wireless with its own branding, separate website, separate data plans, but it's using AT&T's network. The only difference is, as an MVNO customer, you won't get priority on that network. But for the occasional slowdown when you're in a busy part of downtown or you're at a sporting event, it might be worth saving yourself 30, 40, or more percent off your monthly phone bill. That's what MVNOs are in a nutshell. I hope this video has been helpful, but feel free to let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week, and I'll see you in the next video.